Hey everybody, Andrew here from Basic Basics, and today we're gonna to talk about the S17 Pro. Like everybody, I'm always trying to make the most of my money, figure out what we can buy and how we can earn the most. So I settled on the S17 Pro 59 tear hash because basically price per tear hash uh, for buying it couldn't be. Well, one of the things I'm very aware about is when am I going to make my money back on the units I bought? So with these particular S17 Pro 59 tear hash, it cost me about $45 a tear hash to purchase. When I look at the current earning rates right now, not taking into account electricity, I'm making about 20 cents per day per tear hash. So that puts my re return on investment at about 225 days. By return on investment, I mean, that's the amount of money it's taking me to earn, to pay off the miner. Now, obviously the miner still has its own intrinsic value at the end of that, which generally is about the same after 225 days. And since I'm always looking for a bargain, what I wanna do is turn that into a moneymaker. While I'm no computer engineer, I feel like I'm fairly tech savvy and some of the firmware had no problem installing. Some of them I felt like you need some sort of advanced degree. I'm fairly new to Brains OS. In fact, this is the first time I've done an install. It was pretty straightforward though. Go on to their main page, click download now, and select Antminer X17. Now, really the only thing they have, they say it's recommended to do SD card. Well, that's essentially the only thing you got. So go ahead and click on either link, it doesn't matter. It's gonna bring you to the same page where you can download any of the software they offer. For Hyvon, well, they're pretty good. It's pretty straightforward. You wanna go ahead and click on the S1717 Pro. It's gonna bring you to the download link and you're gonna download the file and then go ahead and burn that to an SD card. And that brings us to Awesome Miner. Not sure why they called it Awesome Miner. The interface is not awesome. So you got to start working through. I find we got the S17, S17 Pro. We got to scroll down, keep scrolling. All right, 2.8% dev fee, no worries. Pretty par for the course, but now, oh, download not for SD card. Nowadays, pretty much everything's got to be SD card. So we scroll down to the SD card image. So we found our SD card images. The question comes into play, which version and what's different between the two. Once again, my overall confusion with Awesome Miner. Brings me to ASIC.to. I had high hopes. In fact, I'm not going to lie, loved the videos. It was pretty easy to move along through. Went to the firmware page, selected my S17. Pretty straightforward, scrolled down, figured out we just need the S17 because, yeah, I want to overclock to 85. Who doesn't? Click on the download, and then we're good to go. Obviously, a lot of people wonder about dev fees. I actually, for one, don't mind paying them. If you think about it, nobody's making you something for free that works better. So if I can get five to 10% better performance out of my system, I don't mind paying a two and a half percent dev fee. It still works out for me. All right, so as you can see with the Brains OS, uh, Really straightforward interface. Everything you need to see is right here in front of you. Uh, I've got your pools, you've got main status pages, and you've got each of your chains and how it's tuned to each one. It's a running rate of what your hash rate is versus your temperature. You can individually look over at each board's hash rate to see how they've been performing. And also you can look at temperature. Uh, it's got a couple of high bars here, hot and dangerous. Luckily, we're nowhere near those. Um, it's got how your fans are running, estimated efficiency, what your real hash rate are, and essentially the highest point uh, temperatures that you've got. Rejection ratio, hash rate. This really, the installation was super simple, and everything you want is on the main screen. Best part about this is as soon as you turned it on, it automatically started uh, tuning until it got to a stable point. So as far as I'm concerned, so far, I'm extremely pleased with it. A very, uh, very simple and easy experience. Before we get started with the Hive OS, the first thing you want to do is go ahead and go to your account and get your farm hash ID. That'll enable you to control that from the Hive OS software platform on your phone or computer. 
One of the nice things about HiveOS is the ability to go into the individual chip level frequency and adjust that. Now, Auto-Tune generally does that for you, but it's also nice if you see hardware errors high on one, you can just go in and manually do it yourself. The status screen looks much like any other status screen, other than it being black. One thing you will notice, however, is that I only seem to have one chain showing, and that's one of the big downfalls with Hive OS that I found. It has a tendency to bring the voltage level too low for some of the chains to operate, and as finicky as the S17 is, you really need to be cognizant of that, and they don't really give you the opportunity to dial the individual voltages higher during the auto-tune like some others do. After my S17 seemingly breaking after Hive OS, I opted to go with Awesome Miner because it's named Awesome. Like all the other firmwares, it has the ability to run auto-tune, has the ability for you to actually individually change the voltage and frequency at each chain, and it does a really good job of uh, managing the chip frequency and chip temperatures, uh, which then helps you manage the fan speeds. Uh, it managed to bring one of my chains back to life, actually. As you'll see here, as I first started booting it up, and started finding the ASICs again uh, on chain zero that seemed to crap out after Hive OS dropped the voltage uh, through the PIC chip. Now, that's something you can probably go back in and manually modify the PIC, but luckily in this case, the firm was able to compensate and jack the voltage up, communicate that to the PIC, and bring my board back. Lastly, we've got ASIC.to, or ASIC toe, or whatever they want to call it. Exactly the same as Awesome Miner, uh, pretty much based off of the VNish firmware. They have a few subtleties that might be slightly different. However, uh, it seems to perform pretty much exactly the same way as Awesome Miner. You've got the screens where you can go ahead and modify the auto tuner, set it up for how you want to run. You have the ability to globally change all the chain frequencies. You also have the ability to go down to the individual chip level, much like Awesome Miner. And as you can see, post tune, it got very good results, much like Awesome Miner. Um, probably rivaling along the same that I saw for Brains, and obviously I think all of them are much better than Hive. One of the things you run into when you're running a lot of firmware on these is trying to figure out how to uninstall it. Now, each one of these is installed via SD card, but uh, I also had to go and make sure I was able to uninstall, which caused me to learn quite a bit. One of the things for uninstalling is to ensure that you have a reset in the configuration, much like Hive OS allows you to reset to Bitmain's uh, original firmware, and then ASIC.to or ASIC to or whatever the hell you want to call it, and Awesome Miner allow you in the firmware to reset its state so you can use another SD card. Uh, Brains was the most difficult uh, to uninstall, and that actually made you go in, download a program for Windows or Linux, log into the miner via SSH, reset and delete that IP address uh, so that it would go ahead and reset. But once again, you'll figure it out, but hopefully I can help you get the right firmware right off the bat so you don't have to worry about uninstalling. So the big question is, who won the day in my mind? Well, I can start with last, and that's Hive OS. Uh, whereas I used to love it for the L3, it just was cumbersome to work with on the S17 and caused more problems uh, than it helped. I'd then go tied for second place, I would say Awesome Miner and ASIC.to, ASIC Toe, or whatever it's called. Uh, very simple interface, uh, very good auto tune. Uh, it just seemed that the, the tune wasn't quite there, it took a lot longer. Uh, the, Time to boot up was a lot longer as well. And that brings us to our winner, which I would say Brains. Having never used it before, uh, this project, I have to say, completely impressed. Impressed to the point that I went ahead and installed it, contacted them and got it for my S19, and I'm running it on there as well. Uh, extremely clean interface, very easy to read, and uh, a great auto tuner. So that's what I got for you guys. Once again, Thanks for watching. Uh, this was a long one, but it was a long project as well. Um, any comments or questions, please leave them or go ahead and shoot me an email, info at asicbasics.com. And I appreciate you watching. Go ahead and like it, subscribe, 